Welcome back to part five. 1949 Dumont 15 inch Stratford model RA105. Before I begin the restuff on these electrolytics in the can, turned on my Syncor Universal Generator just to see the vertical and horizontal are in proportion and pretty close that's with no adjustments on the back of the chassis as far as height linearity horizontal centering or anything like that so I think we're going to be fine when we put the original tube on this chassis looks like things are in proportion working well here's the six electrolytics I'm going to be restuffing and I'm going to start with these two on the bottom right because those are single section uh, kind of hard to mess up the wiring on them when you've only got one connector and I have all my electrolytics out that I'm going to be needing to restuff these caps and there's 4, 8, 11, 12 16 different values in those six caps and what I've done here, these are their Dumont symbol numbers on the six caps. And I've put them in packages where easy to keep track of. Like this is C285, 281 and 282, 265, and then this is 214 and 220. And that corresponds with these symbols here. So time to get started. Lots of ways you can do it. Uh, you can just leave the cans intact, put the electrolytics under the chassis. You know, no one would see them, so it really wouldn't matter. But I'm going to be putting the caps inside the cans where it will look original on top and the bottom of the chassis. So let's get started. These twist lock caps can be pretty hard to get out. Uh, I'm working on this one here first and I have these three tabs straightened up they're loose this fourth one when I've desoldered it uh, use a solder sucker and then I use some Kim Wick I'm using these flat needle nose I got a wide good wide base I can get a hold of the twist lock straighten it up and that should pull right out then well I tried my best but there was just too much solder and when I went to pull it out it broke off fortunately I have three ground tabs left there that I can connect to so not a big deal okay heat gun we'll heat this up pull the sleeve off and then make a plan of attack once we see the bottom of this cap see how it's designed here's my sacrificial glove that I use to hold the cap and we just heat it up take a pair of pliers and pull on the end of it and it should come out of this sleeve this is an old piece of aluminum that I use to catch the wax when I'm doing wax caps so we'll put it down just in case Use the hacksaw. There's the old cap. So we'll clean that out. 
put the new cap in, just fold this back, put the cardboard sleeve back over it, and that'll take care of that. Cleaned out, and bored two holes. One will be on the positive terminal there beside it, and the other one goes to a ground lug. There's a positive lead, and this negative lead, I'll wrap it once I get the cap put back in. I will put a little dab of hot glue on the inside just to hold that top on into the cardboard sleeve. And then a dab of hot glue here on each side, slide it back on, and there's a completed cap. And before I put the cap back in, while I can get to it, I'm going to clean around. Yeah, that looks better. That cap put back in and hooked up. And rather than use this old resistor, just put a new one in. A couple of reasons. Number one, we know we've got the correct tolerance resistor now and easier to solder because these leads on these old resistors they're hard to get solder to stick to without scraping them so this makes it a whole lot easier so i'm going to turn the chassis back on we'll make sure we're still working if everything's okay you go to the next one we're okay so on to the next cap and here's cap number two. It's next to that first one I put in. This is just a single section, 80 at 350. And I'm going to try something on this one. I'm going to take my side cutters. I'm going to cut a slit in this lower lip. And just try to peel it back and see if I can get the inside out by doing it that way. I don't want to really saw it because you're going to see a saw mark unless I put a roll of tape or something around it. And then you'll see the tape. So I'm going to give it a shot and we'll see what happens here. Well, I was able to prize that lip back. Not sure that's going to look any better than sawing it, but I think I can trim this off, make it look a little better. But the lugs are loose now on that ring. So let's get it apart and get, get the new one put in. Two down, four to go. This third cap, a little bit easier to prize that crimp. I feel like it's thinner material, but that's it's lifting right up with no problem on this one. See, I've done about half of it. I crimp back to where I can take it apart. Three down. The upper three still left to do. Last cap and we're still working okay. Uh, just need to put the top back on it. You can see these last two. I've done them a little different. Where it gets where it's larger at the bottom. I cut it around it on these last two. I think that worked a lot better. Uh, this one, I cut it a little higher and then I'm going to try to push this on top of it, but it just wasn't large enough to fit, so I'm just going to silicone it. I may put tape around it, help hold it on a little better. These are getting tight here. Quite a job. I worked uh, 4.30. I started about 9.00. I did take lunch break, of course, and 
another probably hour break during the middle of the day. But this was a job. There was so many capacitors and just these six cans. A couple of them were four section, a couple for three section. Just a lot to do. And I really went slow so I wouldn't make any mistakes. That accounted for a lot of the extra time. But happy with the way it worked out. We're still working okay. We've got all the all the caps have been changed now, paper and electrolytic. So we'll move on to something else. Well, not so fast. We have a problem. I was letting this play for just a few minutes. And we've got a horizontal sink problem. The vertical still seems to be okay, but you can see you can't get the horizontal to lock. That's about where it was at when it was working okay, so I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, I checked all my previous repairs that I've done and couldn't find anything that was wrong. And it started substituting tubes. And this is a horizontal oscillator tube. It's a 6AC7. And it's getting really hot. Now, these are, these are actually just glass tubes with a metal case on the outside. So they do get, tend to get pretty warm. Did have a new one. It's a 6AC7. So, put the new one in. There's a problem. Got a good horizontal lock now. So, of the 34 tubes, not counting the picture tube, we had only one bad. There's a 6BG6. Now we have two. Is this 6AC7 is bad. So I think we're okay. I'm going to let it play a while just to be sure. But it seems to be locking good. Picture looks good. Well, that's going to do it for part five. 1949 Dumont. I appreciate you watching the videos and in part six we're going to get that original picture tube we're going to hook it up on the chassis here in the basement and confirm that it's working okay so see you next time we hope you've enjoyed this video if you did hit the like button and we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel. Thanks.